Most movies that withstand the test of time are known for their breakthrough performances, supreme direction, or just plain good storytelling. But for some films, their continued cinematic relevance has more to do with how controversial they were and how notoriously difficult it is for audiences to endure the movie even still. Here are a few films that will forever be associated with how much public pushback they received upon release. Last House on the Left Nowadays, Wes Craven's name tends to conjure up images of Freddy Krueger or Ghostface from Scream. But years before Craven reshaped the horror genre, he started his directing career with a dark, dirty, uncomfortable movie called Last House on the Left. The 1972 movie follows a gang of psychos who brutally destroy two teenage girls, then seek refuge in a house that happens to belong to the parents of one of their victims. Last House's graphic assault sequences were controversial enough, but when combined with an uneven tone that includes a bizarre sheriff, the movie got some seriously negative press. The British Board of Film Classification rejected the film and labeled Last House on the Left a video nasty, meaning that all copies of any VHS tapes within England were to be seized by the police. The movie was only reclassified in 2008. Even one of the film's villains, actor Fred Lincoln, stated that he wished the film was banned internationally rather than just in the UK. This low-budget movie produced for under $90,000 quickly gained such an unsavory reputation that some conspiracy theorists debated whether it had been funded by the mob or adult filmmakers. The Last Temptation of Christ Biblical adaptations are never more than a few inches away from the cliffs of controversy, but this movie stirred up a reaction like no other. At first, 1988's The Last Temptation of Christ doesn't sound like a movie that would cause such a ruckus. It pulled in an Academy Award nomination for Catholic director Martin Scorsese, with a script by Calvinist Paul Schrader. However, the movie's depiction of Jesus Christ, as played by Willem Dafoe, is quite unconventional. Dafoe's Jesus is weary, run down, and tormented by self-doubt over his impending sacrifice. And on the cross, the movie's Jesus experiences a sort of dream sequence, wherein he's tempted to climb down, get married to Mary Magdalene, have kids, and live an ordinary life. Jesus overcomes his last temptation by accepting his role as God's son. But the film was condemned before it was even finished, with its production igniting campaigns, protests, and petitions. Evangelist Bill Bright publicly offered to pay off the studio in exchange for handing over all prints of the film. The film was so loathed that a Paris theater showing The Last Temptation of Christ was even set on fire, landing 13 people in the hospital. Not as bad as what happened to the film's Jesus, but still, you know, pretty bad. The Human Centipede 2, full sequence. We all remember back when the first Human Centipede came out, even if we wish we didn't. The story centered on a mad scientist's rather innovative idea of how to spread one supersized digestive system between three people. Understandably, the movie kicked up a flurry of controversy. However, upon its release, the actual Human Centipede movie turned out to be a surprisingly conventional B-horror movie, albeit one more gruesome than the norm. But that wasn't the case with the even more graphic sequel, The Human Centipede 2. This movie features a fanboy of the original film being so inspired that he creates a homemade copycat centipede of his own using staple guns, duct tape, and barbed wire. The BBFC argued that the grotesqueness of these sequences made it unfit for public consumption and effectively banned the movie in 2011. It met a similar fate with the censorship boards of Australia. Of course, the movie was followed with Human Centipede 3, a film that upped the violence even more, but also dropped off the radar much more quickly. Song of the South Almost everyone has heard Disney's famous zippity doo dah melody because it's practically a symbol of the House of Mouse. But even if you know the Academy Award-winning song, you've probably never seen the movie it originally came from. That's because the film in question, titled Song of the South, has been locked away in Disney's Forbidden Vault for almost three decades. It's widely regarded as a racially insensitive movie that perpetuates Southern slave stereotypes, with black characters like Uncle Remus being portrayed as jolly, happy-go-lucky folk who cheerfully serve their white oppressors. This romanticized, cozy remaking of slavery's dark history has only become more shameful with time. Due to its infamy, Disney has tried to burrow the film out of the world's collective memory. The primary residual traces that remain are that famous tune, and the strange fact that many of the characters have survived as part of the Splash Mountain ride. The Devils Though The Devils engendered a massive controversial backlash when it first came out in 1971, the studio-driven hacking and slashing that the film went through caused it to mostly disappear off the radar until a recent cult revival. The Devils is loosely based on the true story of Urban Grandier, an unconventional Catholic priest who was burned at the stake under accusations of witchcraft in the 1600s. Russell's fusion of religious iconography with graphic imagery set off a volcano of anger with thundering protests greeting The Devils' release. Desperate to calm the reaction, the studio ordered 
delivered countless cuts to the already expensive movie, slicing out so many key sequences that few people today have ever seen the original cut. However, various versions of the film have survived, going on to inspire contemporary filmmakers like Guillermo del Toro and Joe Dante. Life of Brian Monty Python might have been heralded for the Holy Grail, but their 1979 comedy Life of Brian was a different story altogether. The film is a satirical take on the life of Christ, introducing the world to Brian of Nazareth, a regular guy who happens to be born on Christmas. Brian then ends up with the bad luck of being named as the Messiah and is eventually crucified by the Romans. The little rascal has spirit? Has what, sir? Spirit? Yes, he did, sir. Playing the Jesus story for laughs stirred up a tornado of controversy. Theaters showing Life of Brian were picketed, the film was banned in Norway, and the whole enterprise was condemned by religious groups. The BBC even aired a television debate pitting two Monty Python members, John Cleese and Michael Palin, against the Bishop of Southwark and religious spokesman Malcolm Muggeridge. Despite all the controversy, Life of Brian ended up being an enormous box office success. No! F off! Thanks for watching. Click the grunge icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.